You may be seated. Well, we've come together today at the invitation of Corbin and Kayla to share in the joy of their wedding. Now, this is a rare opportunity as this is the first and the last time that they will be getting married. Do you agree? Yes. Okay, that's the first and second. I do. Uh, so very good there. Uh, and it's in that spirit that I ask that if you have cell phones, you silence them, you can put them in your pocket. We've got some professional photographers, videographers that are amazing at what they do. And we don't want you to miss even a single moment of this special day. Uh, and a wedding is an outward expression of the inner love and devotion that two individuals have in their hearts for one another. It's a springboard that launches two incredible people into a lifelong marriage filled with hope, love, adventure, and resolve. And what makes a wedding special uh, and so dynamic is not the subsequent tax benefit that two individuals enjoy. It's not the pomp and circumstance of the wedding, although we will enjoy that as well. And it's not the rings. They get to show their friends and communicate to the world that they're off the market. What makes a wedding so special and incredible is that the idea of a marriage was born from within the heart of God. Uh, God formed marriage, and so God is for marriage. You might say that marriage for a man and a woman is God's highest, holiest, happiest hope. And we, we trace the idea of a marriage all the way back to the very beginning in the book of Genesis, chapter 2. I want to share with you an excerpt from that passage here. It is not good, the Lord says, for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought her uh, to the man. And the man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. It's with that idea in mind, one man, one woman, one son, one daughter, leaving their father and their mother and establishing their own household unit, their own family, that I ask this question. Who is it this day that gives Kayla's hand to Corbin in marriage? Her mother and I do. Well, now's the moment that we can, of course, hand the flowers over and then take a deep breath. You made it. Today <laughs> is your wedding day. Everything is as it should be. The weather is nice. The venue's beautiful. These lovely people are here to support you. Uh, Matt didn't object when he had the chance a moment ago. <laughs> All the details that Corbin has meticulously been planning about his wedding since he was a little boy have all come to fruition. Everything is amazing. Uh, Today is your wedding day. So now we can all relax and enjoy this moment. Now, what's interesting about a wedding is that it's unlikely that either one of you or any of those of, of us in the audience are going to really remember what's said or what is happening here today. And that's not atypical. Whenever we experience significant special moments in our lives, we tend not to remember those details, but we do remember the who. Who was there to experience it with us? And there are lots of who's out in the audience. And They've been staring at you for about three minutes now. So I suggest you return the favor and take it all in. Look at all <laughs> the wonderful people that love you, that are here to support you. These are people that not only are here to show up today at your invitation, but audience, you are the people that need to show up for them tomorrow. Uh, so can I get an amen? amen? Listen, marriage is hard and we're all here with smiles, but we know that smiles can fade quickly. And we need a community of people that are going to rally behind us to spur us on to serve God and to love each other deeply. Now, uh, a good marriage doesn't just happen incidentally. It happens intentionally. That is two individuals working together, serving one another, pursuing God independently and collectively, fighting for each other, not with each other. And Ecclesiastes chapter 4, it describes how much better we are when we work together. And I think the application of this verse is even more powerful in a, a marriage union. Here's what it reads. Two people are better off than one. They can help each other 
succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help, which is in that spirit. I'd say, go ahead and reach out and help out your bride. Hold her hands. There you <laughs> yes. go. Yes. Thank you, husband. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Every marriage is about two people coming together, but a Christian marriage is about two with the addition of a third person who is actively present working on their behalf, and that's Jesus. Jesus is the one that's going to create the unity between the two of you, but it's your job to keep the unity that he creates. And that's no easy task, especially considering how numerous and relentless the forces are that exist to try to separate what God brings together. So I wanna give you a couple of practical ways that you can keep this marriage union strong. Corbin, Kayla desires your love and wants you to make her feel secure. So be intentional about sharing quality time with her, be a good listener, be patient, be kind, empathize with her weaknesses, show affection to her without expecting anything in return, use your words as a tool to build her up. In the beginning, God gave Adam the amazing assignment of naming all the animals, but not just them. He also empowered Adam to name his bride. And Adam called her Eve, which means bearer of life. How edifying, how wonderful it is that Adam spoke that hope into her heart. It's unfortunate that the other side of the coin is true too, that not only can husbands build up their wives with their words, they can tear them down. And anytime a husband uses his words to disparage his wife, whether it's by calling her a name, criticizing her, not only does that change the dynamic of the relationship and deteriorate the, deteriorate the relationship, but it also begins to shake and crumble the identity of who she believes herself to be. So it's important that you use your words to build her up. Kayla is your first and most important ministry. So serve her passionately, purposefully, practically. And if you're not sure where to begin, I recommend the dishes. <laughs> That's my role. <laughs> Kayla, <laughs> Corbin desires your love, but he also deserves your respect. Give Corbin permission to lead your family well and affirm him often. Let, his, let your voice be one that his ears are eager to hear. Corbin needs to hear you say, I'm proud of you. You work hard for our family. I love it when you're around. Welcome his pursuit of physical affection. And when you embrace him, it never hurts to comment on his buffness. <laughs> and if you strong. really, so strong. So if you really want to tickle his ears, then go out of your way to affirm his Excel spreadsheets. The mm. guy's organized. There's no so way good. around it. So good. Both of you, don't sweat the small <laughs> stuff. Communicate often, respectfully, clearly, transparently. Seek to understand before seeking to be understood. Listen to each other. God has given us two ears and one mouth. I think it's fitting that we should also use a proportionate uh, approach to our communication, listening twice as much as we speak. Now, there are gonna be difficult moments in your marriage. Why? Because there are no perfect marriages. Or there are no, are no perfect people. There will be disagreements, hurt feelings and arguments, and that's okay. In fact, fighting sometimes can be very healthy as long as you fight fair and you have established ground rules in terms of engagement that are honorable. Let me share with you some things that are important for you to avoid. Name calling. Uh, don't bring up the past. Uh, avoid using words like always and never. Refuse to punish each other with a silent treatment and never threaten divorce. Ephesians 4.26 says, do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not make room for the devil. So commit to yourselves that you're going to resolve conflict before the sun goes down. And there are new mercies every single day. Lastly, no matter how busy or overwhelming life may be, and it will be at times, commit to giving each other a little TLC every single day. A touch, a look, and a conversation. Now, Corbin and Kayla are audacious enough to write and recite their own vows. And so now is Corbin's opportunity to share his vows and his verbal promise to Kayla. All right. So I would like, can everyone hear me by the way? 
Okay, I'd like to start by saying I'm so sorry for the inconvenience I must have caused you to make you change your last name. Oh. <laughs> must be a big change. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> but who would have thought that from the start of 2020, middle of COVID, we, man, I swipe right on Tinder and that's the most <laughs> life-changing experience ever, not me. But three years later, we've become inseparable and we're bound by a love so deep and genuine. So I'm so proud to be here today with you. And I wanna start by saying a vow. I vow to walk through life with you and your victories, celebrating them just as if they were my own and standing strong with you through all of life's challenges. A couple other things I'm excited for are the traveling experiences from the corners of the world, from the historic cities of Europe to the rich culture of Asia, to the beautiful landscape of South America. <laughs> I can't wait to, from large or small memories, make those memories and cherish them with you. And when I think about our future, I can't help but think of us as parents. I mean, picture this, beautiful fall day like today, maybe not as hot, like what the heck? <laughs> um, I might have to jump in the creek after to cool off. But I'm looking down, we're in our house, there's a casserole in the oven, it smells delicious, I'm excited. And I look down and our child is in my arms. I look back up at you and I see the most amazing mother that I know you will be. Because of your patience, your kindness, and your boundless love, you're gonna shape and mold our children into some of the most amazing human beings I cannot wait to meet. I mean, you're so cool, Kayla. <laughs> your, your purpose, your empathy, your honesty, your humor. I mean, I, it's a privilege to be here. It's an honor. And I want to vow to you that I will be gentle and thoughtful and intentional with what I say. And I'll continue to date you. And we'll, we'll share laughter and have fun. Um, one thing when I think about us is our faith, big piece of our relationship. And I view it like a strong oak tree. We've grown and grown through life group out here in the audience. Um, church, prayer, etc. So I want to promise you that I'll be faithful. I'll be resilient, hopeful, and put God first. In our relationship, I'll guard our garden with vigilance. But when the inevitable fox does make its way in, which it does for everyone, I'll be quick to apologize and ask for forgiveness, forgive, and exude unwavering loyalty to you and I mean I, I also promise to provide with gratitude for what God has given us to our family and to serve you with my whole heart and to never take your love or respect for granted and to remain humble I'm so excited you are my first and my last my forever and always my through thick and thin like you have my heart, my hands, my goals, my dreams, my everything. With God is my powerhouse. I love you unconditionally. So here's to all of the adventure, the growth, the fun, the faith, and the unending love that we have between us. So with family, friends, present, it's an honor that I, Corbin Randall, choose you. Kayla Camille Randall to be my wife. Thank you. Hey, look. Who needs traditional vows, guys? I mean, I, I, those are impressive. I've never heard vows that incorporate both casserole Jesus and South Asia. I mean, that's remarkable, actually. Squeeze it all in. <laughs> you did it. Uh, Kayla, now it's your turn to exchange your vows. mine memorized. So. <laughs> so sorry. <clears throat> Corbin. Growing up, I listened to the country songs coming through my parents' radio. I heard melodies of love and the affection for the woman that they would fall for. I never thought that that kind of love would be reserved for me. That changed by our second date. You invited me to a stargazing show when there was supposed to be a meteor shower. I showed my sister what I was wearing, just in case I got kidnapped, because we were meeting at night, <laughs> and I went to where we were meeting at. You had a blanket laid out and packed snacks and water for us while we waited. I was blushing at how much effort you put into something for someone you barely knew. 
When we went home, I wrote a letter to myself and put it in an envelope. I labeled the envelope, if we get married, and I remember hiding it because I felt so silly and juvenile to think something would go so far just after two dates. Reading the letter this morning, it details our first and second date and how I thought this guy might be different. There are a lot of things I've prayed for in my life, but none of them could amount to the man standing across from me. I could go on and on about all of the things that I love about you, and I will for anyone who asks, but vows are for promises. I promise to be the pillar on your I promise to be the pillars on your foundation of faith, helping hold you up. I promise to value your insight and analytical mind. I will be your best friend and strongest advocate. You are the most important thing in my world, and I will try every day to show you the value you hold in my heart and mind. I will do everything in my power to be the wife you deserve. It will be near impossible, but I will live until my last breath trying my hardest. Well said. Amen. So vows are not only an expression of love, but they're also a, um, a verbal covenant that's being exchanged. And anytime a covenant was given, established, sanctioned by God, it was always accompanied by a physical sign. And a marriage covenant is indeed accompanied by a physical sign, and we call them wedding rings. And the shape of the ring, they're circular, and that is to communicate not only God's unending love for us, demonstrated by Him sending Jesus Christ to die and resurrect, to redeem us and bring us back into fellowship with Him, but... It also communicates the unending love that Corbin and Kayla will have for each other. So Corbin, if you can retrieve Kayla's ring. (laughs) (laughs) And place it on Kayla's ring finger and then you may repeat after me. Yes. You got it. You can hold her hand and repeat after me. (laughs) Kayla. Kayla. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token of the vows. As a token of the vows. That I have made. That I have made. And I give you my love. And I give you my love. Loyalty. Loyalty. And devotion. And devotion. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Kayla, likewise, if you will retrieve Corbin's ring and place it on his ring finger and then repeat after me. Corbin, Corbin, I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a token of the vows. As a token of the vows that I have made. That I have made. And I give you my love. And I give you my love. Loyalty. Loyalty. And devotion. And devotion. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. And finally, the overarching success of a marriage is largely contingent upon the foundation that it is built on, and of course, the foundation you're building your lives on individually and also as a married couple is the foundation of Jesus. And as you draw closer to Him, you'll naturally draw closer to each other and you'll embody and emulate the attributes of love described in 1 Corinthians 13, which I'll read for you now. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Love does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable and it keeps no record of when it has been wrong. Love is never glad about injustice, but always rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures throughout every circumstance. Love will last forever. And my prayer is that this type of love will fill your hearts and your home for the rest of your lives. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful to be present today. Uh, We recognize that we're in your midst. Um, When two or more gather, there you are. Uh, You love marriage. Uh, Because marriage is not only a way for us to be able to enjoy one of the greatest gifts that you have offered to mankind, but it's also one of the most powerful ways to communicate to a lost and dying world that you are a God of love, that you are a God who brings people together. But more importantly, that marriage is a way, it's a symbol to communicate how you desire to be in such close relationship with us. And that has been made possible by you sending Jesus Christ, your son, to die and raise again for us so that through faith in him, by your grace, we can be saved and be in a marriage relationship with you, Lord. God, I pray for Corbin and Kayla that you would pour out your blessings into their lives. I pray, God, that they will pursue you with with everything that they are. Because where you are, Lord, there is hope, there is joy, God, I pray that you will surround them with people 
that will champion their marriage, that will encourage them. When times get tough, people will show up um, on their front door to pray with them, to serve them. I pray that you would um, bring even greater days in the future for them. Father, we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And now, Corbin and Kayla, having exchanged your vows, uh, have you exchanged rings? It's now under the authority of the Word of God, as well as in accordance with the laws of the great state of Texas, that I can say, Corbin, you may kiss your bride. And now I take great pleasure in announcing for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Corbin and Kayla Randall. <laughs>